I hope everyone has it going. So I can actually build my test bench now as I've got all the parts to actually make a working system. I've already put the power supply in there. But yeah, I uh, got a 970 off eBay for uh, about 80 pounds, which isn't too bad of a deal. I won't be using it as my daily driver. So uh, yeah, it's not a bad GPU, not a bad uh, deal. I've got a PNY 250 gig SSD just as a boot drive. Nothing too special there. It, just works got 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance can't go wrong with that 3200 megahertz which goes with our processor pretty nicely this is a Ryzen 3100 it is a pretty good budget CPU it's got four cores eight threads the eight threads are what really make this and uh, it boosts up to 3.9 gigahertz which isn't too bad Motherboard wise we've got the MSI A320A Pro, it's bare basic as motherboards go, nothing too special with it, not even an N.2 on here but uh, yeah, just for a test bench it's no frills but we still have dual channel and stuff like that so uh, it's not too bad. Case wise I'm using my old S340, it's pretty beat up now if we uh, come to the front yeah it's pretty beat up but it'll do the job just fine and because I've only got a single fan header on the motherboard I've actually got a, a fan hub from thermal take first thing I do with any build is I get the motherboard out of the box and I use the box as sort of the uh, the bench to build it on so uh, yeah it's just a good anti-static free anti-static workbench even though this mat is anti-static but yeah, I still do it on the box because you get a bit of a height advantage. And uh, yeah, with the 3100, this will work out of the box as we've got the Ryzen 3000 desktop ready. Marketing on the box, I suppose. So uh, yeah, we'll work straight off the, uh, the bat. If you're going to use a Ryzen 3000 CPU in a motherboard like this, so like a, a 300 series or a 400 series motherboard, make sure it's got this on. If not, you will have to flash the BIOS. Right, to install the CPU, I've just got it down there. We need to lift this arm here. And what you've got to do is, it's a little triangle there. You've got to match it up with the one on the actual socket. And then you just put it in. It should take minimal force. And it just slide right in there and you just knock it in like that. There you go. For this build, we're just using the, uh, the Rafe Stealth no questions needed there really you just do the job you're not overclocking or anything like that so uh, you will call it pretty well and it comes with pre-applied thermal paste as well which uh, is a bonus one thing we will need to do is we will need to remove this bracket which is for other coolers and the Rave prism cooler As soon as you uh, feel the screw get really tight and you can't really turn it anymore, don't force it, it's in. And uh, the way to tell that it is securely on there, you can pick the, uh, the whole motherboard up by, just by the cooler. And then what we need to do is plug this into CPU fan. And if we just plug that in there and then we uh, can read that there in between the, uh, the RAM, which will go here. For RAM I've gone with 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX 3200 megahertz because it's just reliable and it's a really good price. I got this for £55 on Amazon and uh, you can't really beat it to be honest. Right to put the RAM in you've got to pull these tabs back like that and what you do is you align the middle bit so with this we'll just put it in like so make sure it's in between the tabs and then you just force it down it does take a bit of force but as soon as both the clips have gone you know it's in properly right now we're putting in the motherboard it is pretty simple to be honest
this is the SSD I'm using. It's a PNY SSD. It's more of a budget end SSD, but for a sort of just a boot drive on a budget end system like this, it'll do the job just fine. Main, the most of our games will actually be stored on a uh, one terabyte hard drive. So no problems there at all. Right, I've now attached the SSD to the SSD sled and all it takes is these four screws on the bottom and uh, all we do is just slide it in, like so. If we just come here. There we go, and uh, we get a screw on there, which I believe I have. And it's just a thumb screw like that. And there we go, just need to connect it with the SATA power and the SATA data. Okay, so now we have our SATA data installed. We just need to get the SATA power and this drive is ready. One thing I did forget to mention in this video was the front panel connectors. What these do is allow you to restart and turn on your PC from the case and they also hook up the power LED and the hard drive activity light as well. This is the 24 pin power and this provides power to the motherboard so if we just plug this in here it does take a bit of force so do not worry if you feel like you're breaking the motherboard it's totally fine and as soon as you hear that click you're all good. Don't forget the CPU cable that goes into the top. I didn't record it this time around because it is pretty finicky, but it goes up there. Usually it's an eight pin. In this case, it's a four pin because it's a lower end motherboard and it's best to route it through the top right there. Now we can install the graphics card and here it is. This is the 970. If we look, it's got two six pins. So we'll need two six pins from the power supply. All we need to do is just screw in the back like so just to make sure it is secured in properly and it doesn't get torn out or anything like that if you move your system around and it just gives it a bit more rigidity especially for transit and stuff like that so there you go as we can see, it requires SATA power, the same as the SSD, and all we need to do for that is we need to get a SATA connector, like so, and you need to match up the notch. So that goes in just like that. Now this is powered, we just need to uh, connect all the fans and uh, cable manage it. Okay, right, everything else is hooked up apart from the last part, which is the connector for the fan hub. And we just slot that in right there like that until it's in and we can just cable manage backwards. Okay. Okay, that is this PC done. All done on this end. Cable management could be a bit better, but there's only so much you can do with a uh, setup like this. And that is the back of it. Cable management isn't too great. I can release a video on cable management if you want, but I'll be honest, I'm not too great at it. There are points where you could cable tie it down, but I'm not gonna really do that with this. This is a test bench. This is gonna be moved around quite a bit and a lot of hardware changes. So uh, best not to keep anything fixed. So that's essentially how you build a PC. Got side panel on there, everything's all connected up. I will get Windows installed onto this later. And I can release a video on that if you uh, if you request it. So uh, just let me know down in the comments. So yeah, there's me there. Hello everyone. But yeah, that'll be the uh, the end of the video. So uh, 
if you liked it give it a like if you uh, liked it even more subscribe and uh, stick around for the next one